Hi, Marcus Rees Evans, officer in yescalifornia.org. I'd like to talk about the history of yescalifornia.org, how it came to be. In 2012, I wrote the book California's Next Century. It was published and it was picked up a little bit in the news. I traveled to 40 California cities and tried to spread the word. I didn't get very far. Louis Marinelli, who's another officer in Yes, California, found me and we spent weeks talking on the phone for hours a day until we decided that we could maybe do something together talking about moving California to becoming a nation. In 2013, going into early 2014, Tim Draper proposed an initiative that was going to make California multiple states or split it up. Lewis and I started protesting this initiative and we actually got into the news doing that. Um, only one other group was recognized as opposing the Split California Up uh, initiative, and that was one full of ex-political consultants and lobbyists. At that time, we realized that there was a market for people who were interested in a pro-California message. Two people who didn't have experience doing political organizations were able to get as much press as a group full of ex-lobbyists and people who had spent years and decades working at Sacramento. The only thing that we had going for us is a pro-California should stay together and it's good as a nation type message. We knew then that we had something people wanted to hear and something the news would cover and something Californians, frankly, that there was a market for them to listen to. In 2014, we came up with the name Sovereign California and that's when we started branding. Uh, we had a tent and we started doing protests and started coming up with flyers. In 2015, Louis Marinelli ran for assembly in California. And the reason that we did that was he ran on a pro-independence platform. The concept was that you couldn't talk about secession or independence or becoming a nation and be taken seriously at all. We needed to show that voters would not be turned off by that concept. Now, he didn't win that race, but he did get a lot of votes. And he did get people covering him, even though he had this radical message of secession. We needed to be able to prove that the voters would not be turned off by that message. And we did. That same time, we filed multiple initiatives saying California could have the governor be called president. It should create a blue ribbon panel, uh, which would do research on how much it loses from the federal government being part of America. Another research panel looking into things that it could do to become more like a nation. All within the existing legal framework of California being part of the federal system. The idea was that you couldn't legally make California a nation, so we needed to disprove that. What we did was we created a, basically a bunch of laws, filed in, in, in the initiative, got it in the news, and showed that in fact you could change the law within the powers California already had to dramatically move it to nationhood status. That's why we filed those initiatives. Now they didn't pass, but people looked at them and said, Oh, you can actually do this within the current legal allowance. So 2015 was a big year. It came right after we branded. And we were able to show, yes, there's a market. Voters aren't turned off by talking about this. And yes, you legally can do this. Finally, we rebranded Sovereign California as Yes California for a variety of reasons. The big one being people had trouble spelling sovereign. So Yes California was much easier. And the Scottish devolution campaign, moving Scotland very close to effectively de facto independent seceded state, was going very well. We modeled Yes California off of the Yes Scotland campaign. Moving into 2016, we really finally got some good headway. We had about 10,000 people on Facebook on our own. We were in the LA Times twice. We started getting into multiple Sacramento newspapers. Television San Diego, TV in the Bay Area, radio across California. In fact, there was one time where the news in Sacramento and San Diego covered Yes, California on the exact same evening. We didn't arrange any of that. They just started doing it. So we were getting traction. Some of the newspapers now are saying that we weren't covered at all before Donald Trump became president. That's just factually incorrect. I encourage everybody to check out the news articles before November 8th. We also went to an international conference where we got into the international news. Spanish, German, French, English, Scottish. Europe started covering us. And then we started getting the Japanese wanting to find out about us. So 
we were building up, we were getting in California news, we were getting in international news, and we effectively became established. We had our uh, first Facebook official organization verification. It was a good day. And then November 9th happened. And it was over the top. We never thought Donald Trump was going to be um, elected president of America. That's who Americans chose. We had 20,000 people join within about a 48-hour window. We went from 11,000 to 27,000 in about a week. And history changed for our movement and basically California ever since. Moving into 2017, here's what we have planned. In January, we want to start uh, training people for signature gathering. We want to have chapters across the regions, across our nation. We want to open our second cultural cen center, aka embassy, showing that multiple nations will be willing to officially recognize California when it has a vote for secession from America. We want to start having videos, a lot of testimonials, or selfie testimonials as we call it, so people can see real Californians and their faces in an authentic voice talking about why they think this is a good idea. We also want to have chapters and regions well organized. Moving into February, we want the chapters to be sustainable, meaning they have some fundraising for themselves, they have all the skills set, they know how to run meetings, they know how to deal with the media. They're basically really well organized. And we expect, but at least by this time, we'll be able to start having Yes California gathering signatures. Moving into March, we're definitely gathering signatures for sure. And we're probably in for a little ways. And by this time, American President Donald Trump will have completed his first 100 days. The first 100 days is when an American president establishes how they want to run America. So you get some sort of sense about what the next four years will be like. We expect at that time, we'll probably need to have a reevaluation of how we want to deal with America, given that we'll have some indication of what Donald Trump will actually be doing. Here's our history, and here's our future. Thank you very much.